we are continuing our look at the debt limit compromise. I'm joined by former Fed Governor Rick Mishkin. Dr. Mishkin is currently a professor of economics at Columbia University's Graduate School. He joins us on the phone from his home in Westchester, New York. Dr. Mishkin, welcome to Bottom Line. Thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Sir, you heard some of the comments that some of the guests have been saying today. Self-inflicted wound. It doesn't matter what S&P and Moody say. It's a step forward uh, and that the deal fundamentally does nothing to address the massive entitlements that we have. What are your thoughts on it? Well, this process has been an awful one, uh, and uh, it really shows a, a lack of responsibility in, in Washington. Uh, however, they didn't go to the Armageddon-type scenario where uh, they just got to an impasse and basically uh, decided that they wanted to self-destruct the country. So that's the good news. And there is a movement forward in terms of dealing with, with the deficit issues, but there's a, I think the strongest element here is there's a lot of kicking the can down the road. And, and this is something that we've seen actually even, I think, even worse in Europe, uh, that, uh, where they have some real problems in terms of one of their, their sovereign states, which yeah. really is insolvent. But in the U.S. case, this is completely self-inflicted. Well, was this then simply what a lot of people call a Band-Aid to cancer approach, seeing a sense entitlement reform is not part of this deal, as, as far as right now is concerned anyway? No, I think it's a little bit better than that because uh, that the uh, bill that's signed requires that uh, uh, this commission come up with proposals to deal with uh, deficit reduction, and indeed some of those proposals are going to deal with entitlement reform. Uh, the key point here is that you cannot get a significant uh, decrease in government spending uh, by just dealing with discretionary spending. Mm -hmm. It's just too small a part of the pie. The big, big numbers are in entitlements, and uh, uh, there's the, the, the one that's the easier one, which is, is Social Security, still a big problem. And, of course, the, the really the 800-pound uh, the, the gorilla in the room is really Medicare. Well, yesterday I asked Naraman Baravish of IHS Global if the focus should be on economic growth or reduction the deficit and he said in the next two years the focus should be on growth and beyond that it should be the deficit do you agree well I think that, that the, the sense in which I agree with him is that the real issue here is the long run and long run fiscal sustainability and that's entitlements uh, and uh, the issue of discretionary spending and cutting that back uh, currently actually is not going to solve the problem and actually creates a, a, a drag on the economy at a time when in fact the economy is pretty weak the difficulty here is that to say that you're just going to deal with the long run and not do something in the short run uh, may indicate that, you, that people are not going to trust you. So you need yeah. to get some credibility. And I think that's why uh, there was some, some need to actually do some, some deficit reduction in right. the near future, not just in the long, long run. However, yeah. the big, big issues are the ones uh, going down the road, and they really, uh, I think, that there is movement to address it. Uh, unfortunately, that, that there was a, an attempt to get a much bigger budget deal, uh, which I think would have moved us much more right. in a positive direction, uh, would have avoided a debt downgrade, and it just didn't happen. Well, does the debt deal open up a path for growth in the second half of this year? We did see Commerce Department reporting today that consumers cut spending in June by the biggest amount in nearly two years, and incomes also rose by the smallest amount since last September. What happened to the momentum that many economists including Fed Chairman Bernanke predicted would come in the second half of this year? Well, I, I think a lot of people have been surprised about the weakness of the economy. I, I, I think the, the key problem that we're facing is what, what, we, what you typically face after you have a major financial crisis, which of course we did, which is that the nature of a recovery after a major financial crisis is never that strong. Uh, there are just too many headwinds. People are, 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 in fact, still deleveraging, trying to get their balance sheets in order, and therefore not as willing to spend. Right. And I think that that has meant that uh, instead of having a strong recovery, we had a tepid recovery. And in a tepid recovery, uh, you can have uh, soft patches. And in fact, the real danger is that the soft patch is not just a patch. It right. actually becomes much more serious. And that's the concern right now. Well, Dr. Miskin, in our last minute, what are the Fed's policy options right now? Last month, Chairman Bernanke told members of Congress, the Fed may take new action if the economy stalls, including a third round of bond purchases. Are we at that point? Well, I, I don't think we're at the point of, of a third round of bond purchases. Uh, one of the key problems, in fact, the, the real difficulty 
is that, the, that we're not in a low inflation environment right now. Inflation is about the right number, but not certainly not in the case where we have to worry about inflation being too low. And indeed, because of these problems in the fiscal situation, there is a real fear that, in fact, people are going to start to worry more about inflation, and the Fed does not want to feed those fears. Right. So it's really, uh, the Fed is really even between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they can't solve the, the fiscal problems. That's what our, our, our wonderful politicians need to do. Hmm. And they have not come up with any glory from this, this, this episode. It's really a very depressing episode. Obviously, right. it could have been much worse because they could have been maniacs. Instead, they were just, you know, a little bit crazy. <laughs> so well, there's a big difference there. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Former Fed Governor. Governor Rick Mishkin, currently professor of economics at Columbia University's grad school, joining us on the phone from Westchester. Dr. Mishkin, thanks so much.